Oh, McGrath, so great to see you. How are you? I'm doing good. Good, good to see yeah. you. Where, where are you, Bonnie, in Canada? I'm in Toronto. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's, I'd love to be there. I, the one thing I miss is Tim Hortons. I could have gotten you a cup of coffee and put it through the screen for you. I would have been happy to do that. You know what? I, I'll make sure I get your details and I'll send you a big care package. So how's it, that sound? Yeah, I remember going to Toronto Film Festival and they kept bringing around like Tim Horton uh, mugs and I just love the coffee. It's so good. It's, I, I like it too. I like it, the dark roast. It's gotten, yeah. it's gotten better. Um, Tom, thank you so much for bringing us this sequel. It's adorable. I loved it. And I have to say, uh, thanks. I had a little bit of emotion going on too. I was oh, like crying a little bit in there. You know, when you, when you guys did the first one, it was so successful. Did you immediately think we want to do this again? Because it's been obviously a few years. Animation takes a few years. It does, you know, and you know, every movie you approach, you want to tell the best story you can with with what you have, you know, and it was never intended to uh, thinking like, oh, we're going to make a sequel of this. We just hope it does well, you know, right. and um, and it did well, fortunately for us. And then the series said, hey, is there uh, a sequel we could do? And, and, and you don't really think about the wrong approaches, think, oh, it made money. We should do another one. But is there another story to tell we could yeah. do? And, you know, family is an ongoing drama, as we all know. And even with my own family, with the story with my brother and I, with the sibling rivalries, it, it goes well on into adulthood. So we thought, oh, it'd be great to have the part two of this story, which is the two brothers have grown up and grown apart. Tim's a stay-at-home dad. Boss Baby was hardwired for business, became very successful. And, you know, as often with all of us, we can lose contact with family. And sometimes you just forget to pick up the phone or that sort of thing. So we thought, well, it'd be great to kind of tell a story that's a broad comedy, but still, um, you know, say that it's, you know, never too late to reconcile with family. There's always a second chance with family. 100%. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, I, listen, I'm a mom, I raised two boys and um, yeah, boy, could I relate to some of it? I, I have to say, I think both my boys thought they were boss ba babies at some point when they were little, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the truth about all babies. They are, uh, tell you when to sleep and when they're hungry and all that kind of thing. And that was a fun premise. But sitting down with um, Michael McCullough as a writer early on, we just thought, oh, it'd be fun to have um, these two adults that have grown apart to have to relive their childhood. Yeah. And actually become children again to be better adults. Yeah. And so that was a kind of a fun premise to play with, um, which felt com comedic, you know? And then we just thought, well, the first movie is very boy centric. We thought this yeah. is an opportunity to have a strong female voice in the room. And also the voice of a, a, a young generation, you know, where Boss Baby is more like Mad Men style, cutthroat, a lone wolf of the, you know, the last century that we could have a voice of a new generation That's and a female sure. voice. That's more about, you know, uh, teamwork and that has a positive outlook on the world. And, and just thought, uh, well, that's something fresh we could bring to the movie. And then we had Amy Sedaris, of course, come in and help us invent this, this character. Oh, yeah. I mean, Amy Sedaris played. Look, you hit the jackpot with your voice cast in this movie. There's no question. About it. I mean, look, Alec Baldwin, even when he did the first one, I was like, yeah, I can't think of anybody else who could be the boss baby. But getting James Marsden on board, who we all know and love from everything that he does, boy, did he ever knock this one out of the park? And he sings, so thank you very much, because we love that. <laughs> that was part of our casting. We're going, well, Tim. Um, is kind of like still uh, living in his own childhood. And we knew we wanted these, these kind of, um, we wanted to bring more heart to the movie. And we had this opportunity to do a father-daughter story. Yeah. And so we just thought, well, it'd be great if there was some singing and we had some original music in there. So we thought, okay, who's funny and who sings? And immediately James Marsden came to mind. And then Ariana Greenblatt, who plays his daughter. And, you know, when we're casting these movies, you, you use your ears more than your eyes. And so... Yeah. We listen to the actors and it's like, it's like um, finding a band, you know, if B Alec Baldwin is the bass, then James Marsden is the tenor, right. you know, and, um, and that sort of thing. And so you, you play these voices off each other and we were very fortunate in all our first choices agreed to do the movie, including Jeff Goldblum. Oh, and Jeff. Yeah. I mean, again, perfect casting, everybody across the board, like even, even Longoria is the wife. And Eve, oh, I, yeah. Um, Eva was, was amazing to work with. And, um, um, you know, and we, 
we really rely on our actors to help develop the characters as well. You know, we start with a pretty solid script, but I think working like workshopping a play over the course of three years, we get the best movie out of, out of allowing the actors to play and find the character and that sort of thing. Well, especially Alec Baldwin. I mean, the guy, I, there's nobody sharper than that guy. He, like, how much stuff do you have to put on the cutting room floor? I mean, it, it must be crazy working with uh, him. Yeah, I mean, um, if you think about all the work that's generated, the movie is the best 20% of everything that was recorded in a oh. way. You know what I mean? And, um, and I think, you know, the hardest part for me with any of these actors was, uh, you know, being their reading partner and not laughing when they said a line and, and blowing the take, yeah. you know, so covering my mouth a lot was important with all our actors in a way, you know. I, I can imagine. Well, look, you know, let's not, you know, you don't be humble here because you are one of my favorite voice actors. Look, <laughs> you're looking at one of the biggest fans of the Penguins of Madagascar. I'm sorry, your skipper is beyond, I love it. I just, amazing. So do you get jealous now when you're directing these things and you're not full, you know, full on animated character? <laughs> no, you know, it was really fun, you know, and I, 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 you know, never intended to be a voice actor, you know, and wanted like Robert Stack to play the voice of the Penguin, but yeah. it didn't really work out. And I ended up doing that. And I think what I learned from that is what it's like to be in the actor's shoes behind the mic. Cause when we record, there's no sets, there's no costumes or anything That's like right. that. And it's a really about context, like, where am I? What's going on around me? What am I responding to? Because it's a great leap of imagination for any actor to get behind a mic and pretend they're being chased by 200 baby ninjas or they're in an intimate setting, you know, and, and I think it's a testament to our actors. But it taught me to be a better director, knowing that context is key. And so yeah. describing the scene, you know, reading the scene with them and letting them know what's going on around them um, is the most important job I can do. And so it was actually a good lesson to do the voice work to, yeah. to help me become a better director, I hope. Well, I'm sure for, absolutely. And, you know, James Marsden does a good skipper. He, he did it for me earlier. So Oh, he does? Yeah, he does. You have to ask him. He, he, I, I've never heard James a skipper. Yes, he did. He did it for me. It was excellent. But I, did, were you shocked at the time, you know, when that original film came out and the, how the penguins just broke out? and what a big hit they were? Like, was that a shock to you? Uh, yeah, kind of. I remember uh, writing this little scene of boarding it and then working with Eric and they had a little part in the movie and, um, and you know, they were almost gonna get cut because they only had this one scene and then yeah. started thinking about it. I was like, well, where else could we put them in the movie? And I think that's the fun about um, any character and working in animation is that as you, you know, workshop it over three and a half years, you find, you find the characters and you find uh, you can rewrite and add more of them and things you like. And, you know, Tina's character, Amy Sedaris' character was a very small part in the, the original script. Right. But as we, you know, started working with the characters, like, oh, she's the linchpin in all this. It's really her mission to get the brothers back together. And so that's the joy of working in animation is you take these little characters and then they become bigger and more of a part of the movie as you go along. And I think it's the discovery process that makes a great animated film, you know. Oh, hundred percent. Well, you've, you know, you, you've done an amazing job with this one. I absolutely loved it. And um, just thank you so much for your time. And, and anytime you want to come back to Toronto for a Tim's, I'll meet you downtown and we'll have a coffee together. How's that sound? Yeah. Now I got to hit up James Marston and here's Skipper. I've heard Alex. You have to no. James is good. He also did Hugh Jackman for me. I got he's good. He's he's got this hidden talent. I tell you, he's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your I time. I can't think of any skippers. Um, um, I love Toronto. <laughs> That's I like it. That. I like <laughs> We're it. digging to the wide open spaces of Antarctica. It's been three years, so it's I'm a little rusty with it's that. A little rusty, but it's okay. You know what? It made me very happy, and I did appreciate that. So thank no, you. No, so it's much. good. I, I'm sure James is is actually better than mine now. <laughs> I'll send you the link for my interview, and you'll check it out. <laughs> right on. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Have a good bye. Day. Nice talking to you. You too. Bye bye.